Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Where'd we leave the car, David? Right around the next corner. Why weren't we lucky to find a parking space? Mm, certainly were. Hey, 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 don't walk so fast. I want to look in the window. I've been afraid of this. You women. You don't know how to walk. I love window shopping. Doesn't cost a dime. No, except a quarter to park the car. Except we didn't park the car for a quarter. We parked it for nothing. <laughs> it's wonderful how you can wiggle it in backwards. Oh, think nothing of it. I'll never learn. Oh, let's walk a little further. Hardware store's up the street on the right. Now, there is a woman after my own heart. A woman who would rather look in a hardware store window than a dress shop. Oh, hardware is much more fascinating. Every time I look in one of those windows, I wish I had a million dollars. You just said we are window shopping. Of course, darling. Mm. You know, ever since we've been living up here in the last three months, Eastbrook is growing. It seems to get busier every day, doesn't it? Mm. I bet when people look at us, they think we're vacationers or summer people. I'll bet you 20 cents they don't. It's a bet. David, where are you going? I'm going to ask somebody to look at us and tell us whether he's looking at us as vacationers or natives. David, you idiot, come back here. Come yeah, back. Well, if I come back, you'll lose your bet. Oh, well, all right. It's worth 20 cents any day to save my face. <laughs> that face? I wouldn't give 20 cents for it. Oh, you're so sweet. So complimentary. Now walk next to me. Like a stranger. Yes, ma'am. Hey, where's the hardware store? I thought you said it was just up the block. It is. Just up a little more. Now, darling, don't walk so fast. Take it easy. David, you're holding my arm as if I were an old woman. I intend to treat you like an old woman for the next few days. Ugh. I want to make sure that I get a very young son without any more trouble than necessary. Oh, you. Is that all you think about? Mm-hmm. Practically all. Me too. <laughs> Every now and then, I practically forget you're about to become a father. Oh, no uh, bags under my eyes. Isn't it wallets for men? <laughs> look, look, look at that sweet dress. Yeah, we weren't going to look at sweet dresses, remember? I'm just starting to think of dresses again. Well, when we're in New York and you're out of the hospital, you're going to go out and buy yourself a wardrobe that will positively knock my eyes out. Oh, I don't want to do that. It's such nice eyes. No wallets under them. <laughs> Nevertheless, you, you're going to take yourself shopping. Not window shopping, either. You are sweet. Did I ever tell you you're the most generous, thoughtful man I ever met? Hey, don't walk so near the curb. Oh, don't do this. Don't do that. What do you think you are, anyway? The most generous, thoughtful man you ever married. David, what is that shining over there? See? Look, yeah. in the middle of the street. Yeah. There, just see, just beyond the fire hydrant. Oh, I don't see anything. Looks like a dime to me. I'm just going to see what it is. Uh, Claudia, come back here. Is a dime. We're rich finders keepers. And David, finding money is good luck. Can't throw my luck away when it's staring me in the Claudia, face. Claudia, get get back on the sidewalk. There's a car coming. It's coming. You're not going to get any of this dime. Oh, oh. Claudia, you little idiot. I, I, I tripped on the curb. The up. Did you hurt yourself? I don't know yet. Oh, that stupid curb. It wasn't where I thought uh, it Where'd was. you hurt yourself? Are you all right? Of course I'm all right. It's just my ankle, I think. Which one? Right one. Here. Oh, here. You sit down the curb. Now wiggle it around. People think I'm drunk. Well, that's the only decent excuse for your behavior that I can think of. Was a dime. Nice new shiny dime. I don't want to look. Now see if you can move your ankle around. It's much better when I don't. Can't I just leave it the way it is? You little fool. You want to get killed? I didn't get killed. I just twisted my ankle. David, let me get off this curb. People are looking at us. Now let them look. Now, how badly does it hurt? Badly. It serves you right. Take back everything nice I said about you. You're a mean, hard-hearted brute. Shut up now. Now, how does it feel? His feelings are hurt. So are mine. Do you think you sprained it? I think I broke it. Can you move it at all? I'd rather not try. David, what am I going to do? Spend the rest of the night on this curb? I ought to leave you here. I ought to just walk off and leave you. Go ahead. See if I can. Of all the foolish, stupid things to do. If you don't leave me, I'll give you the dime. Hey, look 
But I can wiggle it just a little now, see? I'm perfectly all right every place else. Except in your head. I hate you. I think we ought to get you in to see a doctor. What do I want to see a doctor for? To get your ankle strapped up. Maybe he'll have the sense to put you in a in a wheelchair and handcuff you. Mm-mm. You don't want a doctor. You want a police sergeant. If I could get one, I would. Besides, the only doctor I know is that pediatrician in Bridgeport I saw yesterday. He's not interested in ankles. No? I should think any doctor would be interested in your ankles. Oh, now you're sweet. <laughs> well, there must be some doctor right here in Eastbrook. Well, if you insist... Right next to the dress shop, there was a shingle. I noticed it. The eagle eye. <laughs> now, here, you you think you can stand up? Of course I can stand up. Here. Here, I'll help you. I feel like a stork standing on one foot. A stork would come in handy. Oh, you. Now, here, put your arm around my sh- shoulder. Oh, this is That's nice. Right. Only when there weren't so many people around. Now, come on, darling. It's It's just a few steps now. Take it easy. Stupid the way one ankle can mess everything up. I hope the doctor's in. Doctors are always supposed to be in, aren't they? Now, here we are. Oh, now, just two steps up. You want me to carry you? I do not. <sighs> I made it. Now, I'll ring the bell. His name's Dr. Barry. I don't know why you have to rush off and see a doctor at the mere drop of an ankle. <laughs> twisted my ankle lots of times. I never did a thing about it. You weren't my responsibility then. Oh, here comes somebody now. Yes? Uh, my wife has just turned her ankle. I'm Dr. Barry. Doctor, come in, come in. We hate interrupting you like this, but my husband insists... Your husband is perfectly right. It's a conspiracy. I'll turn on the lights. This is very kind of you, Doctor. Not at all, not at all. Oh, if you're at dinner, my ankle can certainly wait. Been through dinner quite some time now. Now, come right in here. There you are, Mrs. Norton. Sit right down. How'd you know who we were? Well, you moved up here and bought the Tucker house up the road about three months ago, didn't you? (laughs) We didn't have any idea it was such a public affair. (laughs) Eastbrook folks have a way of knowing what's going on here. Even when they're not nosy. I love knowing other people's business. But you are nosy. Now, uh, let me see this ankle. How did it happen? Well, I, I I, know it sounds silly, but I saw a dime in the middle of the street and I... And she tripped on the curb. Young woman, you ought to be spanked. Uh-huh. That's just what David said. David's right. Why, you're going to have a baby in no time at all. You have to handle yourself a mite carefully. Are you a baby doctor, too? I've handled quite a few in my time. <clears throat> yes, indeed I have. You'll find babies I've brought into the world and taken care of all over Eastbrook. And over a good part of the world, too. Must be a nice feeling. Tis, tis. This here your first baby? I've been watching you. You're coming around fine, Mrs. Norton. Who's bringing your son into the world? David, he knew it was going to be a son. <laughs> well, Dr. Barry is a fortune teller. Dr. Rowland in New York is taking care of me. Thaddeus Rowland's a good man. He sounds like Mama. Yep, he's got a fine reputation. We're going into town on Friday just to be there. That's a good idea, but it ain't really necessary. First babies are never in a hurry. When you think he's coming right away, then you've got a good many hours to wait. So take your time, and there's nothing to hurry about. You're very reassuring to talk to, Doctor. Just experience, my boy. While I've been practicing medicine, I've seen babies get into the world in the dangdest ways. Yep, it'd amaze you how much they want to get here. Then, 20 years later, they can't figure out why they did. (laughs) (laughs) I I see what you mean. (laughs) I don't expect Mrs. Norton here is going to have much trouble. Oh. I've been watching her these few months. She's a fine, healthy young woman. Have yourself some tobacco, Mr. Norton. Oh, thank you. I uh, I don't mind if I do. Say, I uh, <clears throat> hope you didn't change the paneling in the hall in the Tucker house. No, as a matter of fact, we didn't touch it. Nice house, the Tucker house. Yes, it is. Spent a good many hours there. I was always kind of afraid of uh, some city folks who would buy the place and turn it into some kind of a curio shop. Well, sometime when you have the time, you'll have to come down and see exactly what we've done to it, Doctor. Be looking forward to it. By the way, that's a 
That's a nice-sized trout you have up there on the wall. Caught him right down in back of Eastbrook in the stream near your house. Really? He gave me quite a tussle. I don't go for stuffing fish and hanging them up on the wall, but Mrs. Barry, well, she thought this one had a right nice look in his eye, and we ought to keep him around for a while. Yes, I agree with Mrs. Barry. Fishing's nice, but once you've caught the fish, the fun's over. You women folk, <laughs> you're all the same. This is a nice, comfortable room, isn't it, David? Mm. It's the sort of room that you feel you've been in before. Mm. I guess I ought to do a little fixing up in here. Modernize it a bit, maybe, but... Well, I, I've i been practicing a long time now. And you get so you hate to change things. Mm, I know. I'll get the adhesive tape, young lady. We'll strap that ankle of yours. You stay off of it now for 24 hours. 24 hours? If it pains you tonight, put an ice bag on it and take an aspirin. Uh, if you still got trouble with it tomorrow or the next day, call me and I'll run down to see you. Just talking to you makes it feel better already. Well, I'll tell you how I feel. Medicine's a fine thing because it helps people. And I like to be here when I'm needed. Now, your baby's going to come into this world all right, Mrs. Norton. One thing about babies, you can't stop them coming into the world. They seem to like it. And, Mr. Norton, <clears throat> drop in late some afternoon before the trout season's over. Maybe we can find something important to talk about. <laughs> now, I'll be with you in just a minute. Okay. David, what are you thinking about? He's a nice man, isn't he? Mm. Sort of makes me feel as if my father were still alive. That's how I feel. And he's just the kind of man our son would like as a grandfather, don't you think? I think so. Isn't life amazing? Here tonight we came down to Eastbrook just to buy some toothpaste. And when we were window shopping for nothing, I found a dime and a doctor for our son. Well, hang on to that dime, darling. So far, it's good luck. Mm -hmm. Dum, dum, da dum, dum. La, 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 In restaurants and at soda fountains, on dining cars and at roadside stands, lunch with Coke makes lunchtime refreshment time. Listen to the orders. Ham sandwich and Coke, hamburger and Coke, shrimp salad and Coke, they say, to the man behind the counter or the waiter bending over the table. Keep plenty of Coca-Cola in your refrigerator, and you can lunch refreshed at home. It's a good idea. Try it. Well, Joe, it looks like we've stumbled onto the doctor we've been looking for. <laughs> Stumble is right. How's Claudia's ankle? Oh, she'll be all right. It's nothing serious. On the contrary, though, a very profitable stumble. Well, Dr. Barry is my kind of doctor, too, David. I'm glad it worked out this way. Well, when we need him, which I hope won't be too often, he'll be the right one. Now, I've got to be getting along. Going home, David? I promised Claudia an ice cream soda first. She calls it her reward. David, she'll get her reward tomorrow. You mean uh, another ice cream soda? No, but uh, ice cream. Oh? Homemade ice cream. Oh, oh. Sleep on it, David. And good luck for tomorrow. Well, thanks for the warning. So long, Joe. Bye, David. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. <laughs>